Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the show. Got a good one for you today. I know a lot of you guys, myself included, are really looking forward to getting back out in the woods. Uh, spring bear season is just around the corner. And, you know, this will be my first year um, hunting bears out west. I've hunted bears some here on the east coast, but it's a very different style of hunting. And I've never killed a bear. So uh, I'm really looking forward to getting out in the woods and doing some bear hunting. But I'm a total newbie. So <laughs> today I link up with a guy named Brandon Purcell. Um, I linked up, the, linked up with him first on Instagram just kind of seeing some of the cool stuff he'd been doing. Uh, he's a professional bear hunting guide. He guides in Alaska and Montana mainly. Um, and then, you know, I was looking for some good bear content the other day and stumbled across uh, an episode of Eastman's Elevated with Brian Barney. And he was actually the guest. Um, on Instagram, his name is Durango Boone. Um, but his real name is Brandon Purcell. So um, him and... Um, Brian had a really cool conversation on the Eastman's show about bear hunting. And um, so, yeah, I just asked if you would mind joining me on the podcast and kind of really almost going through like a, you know, spring bear 101 type thing. You know, I think it's still be valuable for guys who um, have done some bear hunting. Um, but we kind of hit everything from, you know, time of year to terrain to be on the lookout for. Um, how he hunts them, where he looks for them, even down to like really practical stuff like shot placement, you know, cleaning a bear in the field. Um, so if you're looking at doing this hunt, um, which is a, a hunt that's kind of growing in popularity, and it's, you know, one of the few tags you can still just kind of buy over the counter out west. So it's a, it's a good way to, you know, shake the rust off or test some of your backcountry stuff. Um, and just out, get out in the spring and have a really great hunt. So, um, if you're like me and you are heading out or you're thinking about heading out on a spring bear hunt, but you don't really know much about it, this is a great episode for you. Again, like I said, I think there's still some value in there for guys who, <clears throat> excuse me, might have a little more experience, but, uh, because Brandon is a very experienced uh, and very knowledgeable bear hunter. Um, so there's great stuff in here. If you want to do that kind of DIY style, or, you know, you can reach out to Brandon on Instagram and, uh, you know, and link up and maybe hire him to uh, guide you on a hunt. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this episode and uh, we'll see you on the next one. So I'm here today with my guest, Brandon Purcell. How you doing, man? Good, man. It's an awesome day. Yeah. So you said you're near Missoula, correct? Yep. About Sweet. an hour south of there. Okay. I see some good looking mounts in the background there. Did you kill all those? Uh, yep. Everything. Nice, There's man. a moose there too. And <clears throat> wow. Caribou. Another elk. That's a beauty. Another deer. It's a nice, <laughs> lo nice looking trophy room, man. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> Where'd you kill your sheep? Uh, Montana. Okay. It was actually my first bow kill. Uh, I got wow. through that tag when I was 21. It kind of changed my life, you know? <laughs> yeah. I dropped out of college and just like went for that. <laughs> All right, you got you to tell me the quick, the quick and dirty story there. Uh, yeah, so I drew the tag when I was 21 and it kind of like <clears throat> was the catalyst for me. I was like, and I knew I was like, if I drew that tag, I was going to go after it with a bow. Um, uh -huh. We spent 10 days uh, up in the Alpine chasing that thing. We had an opportunity on like day two and then struggled for like eight days. Um, ended up shooting that ram at like, I don't even know the distance. I didn't have a range finder at the time. Uh, <laughs> shot at a group of like 30 some rams. Um, and it that thing after I shot, it tumbled like 1500 feet down oh the mountain. <clears throat> it was pretty crazy. But I mean, that was just like an epic hunt, you know, got to spend 10 days. Yeah up in the high country with my dad like chasing sheep it was pretty sweet had you been like applying or like getting bonus points or whatever for that for like your whole life or did it just get super lucky or um i i Both? don't think i had very many points i think i had like one or two um wow. <clears throat> and i just kind of put in for it i'd put in for another unit like a couple times but i'd never really like pursued it yeah super and then i was just like i'm gonna put in for this district and drew it you know that's amazing yeah, it was pretty crazy. Cool, man. So, um, 
just tell me, you know, I've talked to you a little bit on Instagram and I've heard you on Eastman's, um, but I don't know you very well. So um, for me and, you know, the listeners, just give me a quick rundown on who you are, uh, what you're up to and kind of what you do. Yeah, so I am a professional hunting guide. I've been guiding throughout the West for a little about the last 10 or 11 years. Um, I've guided Montana, Colorado, New Mexico, uh, Sonora, and now branching out into Alaska. Um, cool. Kind of just doing doing some adventure hunting and traveling, and you know, yeah. To live the best life. <laughs> <laughs> are you uh, are you single? Are you married? You got kids or anything? Or I'm married, no kids. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Yeah, man. Yeah, things get a little more complicated when you add kids to the mix, but you know, For that's sure. it, that's its own adventure. But sure. Um, what kind of stuff have you done down in Sonora? Because I I actually just uh started planning a trip um for this coming january um down nice. there so yeah what do you got going down there uh i guided i guided one season down there and i did coos mule deer and i got to guide a desert <clears throat> oh okay cool cool man um so yeah dude uh oh yeah i saw on your instagram story uh those alaska results haven't posted yet have they today's the no, day though to be like any minute now i mean i Somebody told me it's like after 9 a.m. So okay. still two hours, you know. What is that? So it's like two hours from now? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's 7.30 there right okay. now. Well, you'll have to let me know if you draw anything because uh, I got, I think I am I put in for a couple of caribou tags and the Afognak elk or. Oh, nice. Yeah. So what would you put in for? Uh, everything. Everything? <laughs> everything except elk. Okay. Cool, man. So, yeah. So, um, I wanted to, I heard you on Eastman's and you guys were talking about spring bears. Yep. And so I got, um, I've hunted bears before out East. I live in Virginia we actually have pretty, pretty good bear population, uh, pretty good sized bears, but it's totally different kind of style of hunting out here. So I've hunted bears out here, but, um, a lot of guys do it with hounds out here or over bait. Um, just due to the nature of the landscape and terrain here, you really can't spot and stalk hunt. Sure. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty much a newbie. Um, and you know, I think a lot of other guys, you know, this is a kind of a hunt that's grown in popularity. Um, and, uh, it's one of the few tags that you can still kind of get fairly easily in a lot of places out West. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it, but I just kind of wanted to do, pretty much like a Western bear hunting, like one oh one kind of thing with you. Cause I know you know a lot about it for sure. Yeah. And I mean, it is definitely a fun hunt. There is a steep, steep learning curve there. I mean, <clears throat> I went like my first year, it was like, I was, I saw like two or three bears the whole season. And I was like, wow. I was like, Oh man, I, you know, I can still like look back and remember those bears. Yeah. Uh, now it's like, if I'm not seeing one to three bears a day, I'm like, what am I doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, it, it definitely takes a minute to like, get it, yeah. you know, it's not like you just don't wander out there. You might, but you know, um, there's like a couple different phases of the seasons. We start out in April and those bears are like emerging from their dens. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're not like, there's not a whole lot of country to hunt because not a, not a whole lot's melted off yet. So they're right. kind of confined to like a pretty small band on the mountain and generally like that April time frame, like you'll find them within about a, I don't know, 500 to a thousand feet. Like every single bear that you see will be in that strip, regardless of where you're at, like in the same general vicinity. Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice because you're kind of concentrated. Um, but the downside of that is there's a shitload of snow. You are like post holing. Um, you know, it's not like necessarily like super warm. Right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but you know the advantage is there's no ticks <laughs> yeah which is sweet and then you also like if you do see them they're pretty stationary so they're easier to get on um you trans start transitioning later in the year especially like once you get into may and once you get into may if you see a bear you'd better go try to kill it because you will never see that bear again mm. you know um you get into that mid-may and like more countries opened up obviously and those bears are going to be a little bit more widespread um and like i said like if you see a bear middle like in may or june like you'd better go try to kill that bear because you'll never see it yeah again. 
we've seen it in april though like you can like see a bear and i've had a lot of times in april where you'll see a bear and go and like get on it the next day you know because they're not going very far um, yeah that's not all the time but most gotcha. of the time so you mentioned before like um on eastman's i think that you kind of look at the bear season almost as like three distinct time periods um and you kind of hit on it a little bit but just kind of like just maybe run me through real quick like the three kind of time periods and like maybe the differences in hunting kind of each zone a little more in sure. detail yeah so pretty I touched on april pretty good um may is just kind of like a transition time they're going from like the denning area to like starting the later into may you get you start to get into the rut and then mm -hmm. the rut happens in June. Um, I mean, my strategy is like pretty similar for all three time periods. Um, yeah. It's a little bit different in April. You kind of got to like know where their denning zones are and that'll vary in elevation between regions. Uh, yeah. But for the most part, it's like you're going to target them at a specific elevation and you're, they're always going to be on the South facing aspects, anything that's, they're not going to be on anything that's like north facing at all that time of year because they're like their dens are like burrowed into those south facing hillsides because it's first place to get sun first place to get grass so you'll find them on these like rocky ledges it's pretty cool because it's more akin to like a mountain goat hunt um mm -hmm. uh, and that's but, when they're kind of first coming out of their dens you're saying <laughs> exactly so they'll like they're not gonna be moving a lot a lot of times when you see them that time of year they're like pretty lethargic and yeah. like they're just you'll see them like sit there and feeding on the same ledge all day. Yeah. Uh, Do you see a, like a large um, fluctuation between like when they first come out of their den and wait to like later in the season when they've kind of packed on some weight or is it not, not much? I don't know if it really matters too much. I think those bigger bears are always going to be fairly large. Um, mm -hmm. I think where you see differences is probably in like smaller bears because they don't winter as well. Yeah. You know, they're not like used to it. They're not like, especially ones that have just been kicked off from mom. Um, yeah. Those bears aren't going to winter as good as like, you know, a hardy bear who's like eight plus years old, you know? Right. So, okay. So that takes us through, I think you were talking about, I kind of cut you off there, but you were, <laughs> I don't remember where you were. <laughs> uh, yeah. Early May. Early May. So like, yeah, early May, those bears are definitely starting to cruise more. Uh -huh. um, still the program is like, I spend, 90% of my day glassing. Mm -hmm. If you're not spending most of your day glassing, you're not doing it right. Like, you know, um, but those bears in, in May are starting to cruise, just looking for like the greenest, freshest grass, like the best habitat. Like we started looking into May. It's like, you're going to be looking at like those quintessential, like bear areas, like high, super high meadows, steep faces, grass. You want to look for like smaller openings in more timber rather than like, more openings and less timber if that makes mm, sense yeah you know you start looking at more openings and those bears could be anywhere in there but if there's a small opening in a huge swath of timber like you know there'll be bears there because they mm. want to like they will come out and feed like they like that sunlight you know it warms right. them up <clears throat> they sure. can still stick close to that timber and have a escape route quickly i exactly. guess exactly yeah yeah um and then you know they're kind of that's like your quintessential bear time to hunt bears is may because they're like doing like the cruise and looking for food but they're not like hauling ass looking for tail yet you know yeah. uh, when you start seeing them once you transition into that june time frame it's really like the rut and a lot of times what you'll end up seeing is like you'll just see a boar just like cruising you know like you'll see him and he will not stop you know just got like his nose to the wind and he's just like you know looking for sows um yeah that can be a really fun time of year to hunt and it can also be super frustrating because a lot of times you'll just you'll see a bear and it will just never stop and there's like no possibility to get on it you right. know what i mean um but like er like the advantage though is it's like if he hits a hot sow like he's not gonna leave that bear mm -hmm. and sometimes that sow will like attract like numerous boars into the area so it can be like it can be pretty good when you find that hot sow but sometimes that june time frame like not only are the days super long, but it can be like your sightings can actually like start to go down in hmm. June. I feel yeah. like you see the most bears, like the most bang for your buck is in May. <clears throat> for gotcha. sure. So you're, you're spending most of your time glassing and you're um, not really changing it up a whole lot in terms of tactics as far as when the rut kicks in and stuff like that. 
No, it's still yeah. just like glass, glass, glass as much as you can. You might end up hiking more in June because it's like there's more country open, yeah. you know? And so it's like you want to try to concentrate on like good areas and it takes an eye for that after a while to like realize like what is a good area and what's not. Right. Um, but generally, you know, you like you still want to spend most of your day on the glass. If you're hiking too much, you just don't have eyes on the country, you know? For sure. So, okay, so... I like, for example, um, like I said, I'm pretty new, but I think, you know, I identified, let's just start from like, okay, let's say a guy, for example, myself has picked out a unit. I think I got a pretty decent looking unit. Um, now I'm just going to start trying to pick apart that unit, um, for good, for good areas. Like what are there some kind of areas you like to key in on, um, when you're kind of just e-scouting? I mean, obviously you probably have a very, you know, good knowledge of on the ground since you spent a lot of time out there. But like for a guy like me, who's all I can really do is e-scout uh, at this point. Is there certain areas you like to key in on um, as you're looking for, for good areas? Uh, you know, that again kind of goes on to like timing. So if you're like looking at mid-May, um, it, it really a lot of it's like boots on the ground too. Because you can do a lot of e-scouting and then you get there and like things are totally different. Yeah, always. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you want to kind of have like an open, especially if you're traveling to come do it. Um, you want to have definitely like an open eyes when you like, don't be so locked into your plan for e-scouting that you like for don't sure. realize what's going on. Um, a good like rule of thumb though, is like those bears are going to be pretty close to the snow line throughout the season. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll generally find them. I mean, like I like to start looking right at the snow line and then kind of start coming down from there you see them mostly on south facing aspects early in the year later in the year especially like later in may into june you could definitely see them on north facing aspects and any other aspects you know um you want to look for like like i said like park slash open areas in the midst of like bigger amounts of timber yeah. uh it, and again like you don't want to go to an area that is too much open country because like bears don't love that you want to have a good mix of like more timber less opening and like steep the steeper okay. the better you know for yeah. sure um one thing i was thinking about too is like so my normal you know my normal mode of operation for this type of hunt is um you know find some trails that can take me in you know off the road system pretty deep um you know, and then you have kind of two different types of trail. You kind of have your ridge top trail and then you sort of have your like creek bottom trail. And normally, sure. you know, normally I would kind of stay up high to have a better vantage. But I was thinking, you know, if you're if you're looking for bears that are, you know, just below the snow line, um, are you better off to kind of hit those low trails and, and glass up? Or should you still be looking to get high and glass all around and down? I have better luck. You know, it's depends on your area again um i generally have better luck hiking up the creek bottom trails and then like get up there a ways to wherever you want to get to and then crawl up one side like until you can get the best vantage of what's around you you know mm -hmm. um the ridge top thing it's not a bad idea either it'll get you the elevation but a lot of times that just means that you're gonna have to like do a serious send when you like see one you know <laughs> yeah, what i mean yeah. so you want to kind of have like a mix of like you know you want to have something that's like approachable and like right. get put you in like have the ability to actually kill something you know so you're using kind of the lower elevation trails as access and then getting a little up to get a better vantage of the whole area kind of thing yep exactly and like i definitely try to caution guys against getting trapped in the mentality of like, you have to go super deep for these things. Mm -hmm. You know, I've killed a lot of really big bears, like fairly close to a road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like not, I don't, I don't road hunt in the traditional sense, like guys walking, logging roads and stuff, but it's like, dude, those bears, like you could find big bears 50, 60 feet off the road, Yeah, you know, but yeah. there, and there's even stuff that you can like, you know, don't, don't shy away from like, if you find a good spot on the road to glass from like, do it, you yeah. know, cause yeah, it can not? save energy, you know, like, especially if you're in there for a couple days, like it's kind of nice sometimes just to have like a chill day of glassing rather than like beating the bush to get up in there. And then, you know what I mean? Like you're yeah. burning yourself for sure. Do you see a lot of pressure 
in bear season? It depends. Depends on where you're at. Some areas yeah. of the state definitely have like more pressure, you know. Um, other areas kind of get overlooked. Hmm. So it okay. kind of depends where you're going. Um, another thing I was kind of wondering about was, um, so, you know, like with deer and stuff like that, like I don't get too crazy on it, but I definitely do consider moon phase, you know, when I'm looking at a time frame, you know, if I'm traveling out for a hunt, do you see any, like, uh, so I think this year, middle of May, there's kind of a big full moon, like right in the middle. So I was kind of like wondering if I should, you know, edge towards the beginning of May or maybe slip out there after or what, or do you take moon phase into account at all? You think it affects their movement at all or? I mean, if it's really hot, yeah, for sure. It'll affect it. Cause then they're not going to like have to come out. Um, so if there's a, if it's hot and there's a full moon, they're going to be moving more nocturnally just cause they got better visibility. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And even just like, they don't like it when it's super warm. Um, yeah. but normally like on a normal May, I wouldn't worry about it too much, yeah. at least for bear hunting, you know, it just doesn't seem like they got to come out and feed and they do honestly like come out into like that South facing stuff just to like get in the sun, you know, and yeah. like feed in the sun for sure. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so I'm just moving down the line here, man. I just got a whole list of questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, this is good stuff though. I think, um, you know, a lot of the stuff is stuff that guys that like you, that have been hunting bears for a long time, just kind of like take for granted. But you know, if you're, if you're new, um, it's totally different species. And I mean, you know, if, if you're coming from out East and you're used to hunting whitetail, and you're going on a mule deer hunt or something, I mean, there's still deer, but like if you've never sure. hunted, you know, it's a completely different kind of animal. So, um, what about like, uh, like field judging these things? I know that's, that's kind of traditionally a pretty tough thing to do. Like, how do you, you know, um, do you have any kind of rules of thumb that you go by for field judging bears? Um, a spotting scope is essential. Mm. You know, there, it's, there's very few bears that from distance, especially you're going to be able to like, there's a, a few exceptions, especially like giant bears. You're going to be able to tell with the binos that that's a big bear. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of a good thing too, is like your first initial impression of the bear is like generally like pretty accurate, you know? Um, just kind of that gut, like, Oh, that's yeah, big. Or, yeah. Sure. Um, one like really actually good way is if you have like a, uh, like an MOA reticle mm-hmm. in your rifle scope, you can like even from distance because you can do the calculations and figure out like what one moa is at whatever you're looking at and you can kind of like judge that bear especially length you know um Mm. that can be a good way to kind of validate what you're looking at you know if you have that um ability otherwise like i try definitely i mean at least i want to try to target boars so like what i'm going to look for is like kind of a bigger front end on the bear like it mm. should kind of be sloped like up from its butt to its shoulders yeah. uh, if you see like that bear's got a big butt it's like probably a sow um because the sows generally have like less like stacked shoulders uh whereas a boar will have like a pretty beefy like bodybuilder like front end you know nice uh, attitude too while they're out there on the slope like if that bear's acting kind of like skittish and like looking around a lot when it's out there, it's probably a smaller bear because there's yeah. probably a bigger bear around. Those bigger boars will just like, they'll walk out in the opening and they don't even care. You know, they're right. not looking over their shoulder. They're not doing anything. They're just like, they're, you know, king of the patch. You yeah. know what I mean? Doesn't That's like matter. a pretty good indicator too of like a boar versus a sow. It's like that sow will kind of be like squirrely looking around you know yeah, um, yeah man. It, it's really really tough though and i've definitely made mistakes i think like of anything i've guided bears the easiest one to misjudge for sure yeah um and i know like in montana like i just did that little uh um it was like a grizzly versus black bear identification test online or whatever yep for sure you guys run into a lot of grizzlies out there um i see a few uh, it really, again, depends on the area you're at. Some of the areas of the state don't even have grizzly yeah. bears. Um, they are expanding, so it is kind of like something to keep in the back of your head. Like, And I yeah. always tell people, like, you want to look at that bear for as long as possible. I mean, generally, like, I can, I generally try to watch a bear for, like, 15 or 20 minutes. And that kind of not only, like, allows me to judge size, but it also allows me to, like, judge what that bear's behavior is. Are they going to sit there and feed for an hour or are they like cruising, yeah. you know? 
because you'd like there's nothing worse than like prematurely like going after something only to have like get there and the thing is gone yeah you know what i mean For um, sure. so it's like that 15 minute window it'll allow, allow you to try to assess size make sure it's not a sow and then like obviously make sure it's not a grizzly but it should be like pretty evident when you're looking oh yeah at whether it's a grizzly or a black bear yeah i got a hundred on that little quiz it's it's pretty obvious when you're looking at that huge hump on the back of their shoulders and like that big that big head um sure. you, ever, you ever had any like uh encounters with one or any sketchy even with black bears any sketchy encounters because i know um, you like to bow hunt them so yeah i've never had anything too sketchy i mean i've killed some bears personally and guided them at really close range like some of the biggest ones the biggest ones i've ever guided have all been shot under 50 mm. um which is kind of crazy but it is a little like adrenaline inducing because just like woof like this the one i killed the client was really it was a huge bear it was intimidatingly large even like on the hook, <laughs> it was like woof and we just like we saw him from a long ways away and got over there it took us like an hour and a half two hours to get over there and it was like we popped up and that bear was at like a hundred yards and it was mm. like he's like feeding head down to us and he fed into like 32 yards or something like that but i was even just like sitting there because the client had the gun and i'm just like sitting beside him like i hope he doesn't miss <laughs> <laughs> or wound him you know yeah do you carry a sidearm when you're in there no generally not no nah. um well you mentioned optics too um like what kind of what kind of optic like do you like to run what kind of size do you run um my binos are 10 by 42s and then i have a 25 to 50 wide angle spotter um okay it's pretty universal i can like backpack hunt i've never felt like under glass with that um, yeah the best glass you can afford obviously it'll definitely pay dividends um you know not if you're on a budget no a spotter is better than no spotter for yeah. sure um but definitely that that better glass is just so much more clear and especially if you're like you know you're glassing all day i've definitely found like earlier in my guide career i wasn't able to afford good glass and i had like you know cheaper stuff but man when i was sitting there 10 hours a day looking through the glass it would start giving me oh, yeah. Breaks, yeah you know what i mean Which starts stuff. to screw with your eyes yeah yeah but then you get into that like higher end optics and it's like you definitely get way i mean i don't know that i've gotten that really at all in the last you know five six years what do you what, what kind of glass do you run? Uh, I'm pretty much Swaro throughout. Yeah. Bino, spotter, rifle scope. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, I saw. I was out in Arizona recently, and um, yeah, after after a couple hours staring through like mediocre glass, you can definitely tell like your eyes are starting to starting to wear out a little bit. For sure. Um, so yeah, man. Um, what about like you mentioned like you're guiding with and a lot of guys are shooting rifles. So I'm gonna do a rifle hunt on this one. Um, what kind of like what do you what do you like to go for in terms of like shot placement? Because I know I've heard different guys say different things, and it's different. I feel like on a bear than on like an ungulate. So like, what's your kind of rule of thumb with shot placement? Avoid the shoulder. Okay. <laughs> uh, like if you like bears are built a lot like we are. So if you like looked at a person like sideways with their arms out, uh -huh. there's like nothing right here. There's no vital organs behind my shoulder. You yeah, know, at all. might clip the top of the lung, but like, probably not. Um, in all honesty, like, center mass is like fairly hard to beat because their their lungs are like kind of back in their body. You know, it's like you got to imagine like their rib cage. Mm -hmm. like, lungs are pretty much their whole rib cage, and they have guts, you know, but they're like more back. Um, yeah, a lot of I've, the the bears that I've seen wounded with clients have all been shot in the shoulder. You know, and mm -hmm. it's like that shoulder blade is super thick. I've had like the bullet like deflect in the scapula. And then it's like, again, there's not really much behind there. And people are like, because like deer or elk, I'm, I'm shoulder all day. Right. Like, you know, tuck it like, right behind that shoulder. Punch that thing in the shoulder and break that thing down. Yeah. Um, but a bear, there's just like not a lot of vitals behind there. Where a deer and elk, you shoot it behind the shoulder and that's like, you're punching the lungs perfect. You know, yeah. not only that, but you're stopping them. But a bear just has such like, a drive to, to live they're not gonna like post up after they get shot like they're gonna like go okay. you know so i always try to tell people like stay behind the shoulder center up and down and yeah like the center of body is not a bad option you want to maybe be slightly forward of that but that generally is like a pretty good yeah i've heard know. some people say middle of the middle but you're saying yeah. maybe just shade it a little bit forward of the middle of the middle <laughs> 
for sure. You just don't want to punch them in the guts, but you want to like, you want to be back behind that shoulder enough to where you're like hitting lungs, you yeah. know? So, uh, if you, I know you're a bow hunter, but if you're, if you were going to take a rifle out there, what are you taking? Um, I've used my 30 odd six on everything yeah. uh, in North America basically. So, you know, I don't, they're not very thick skinned animals. Um, so you don't really need like a 338 ultra mag or anything like that. <laughs> you know, if, like brown bear. Yeah. You'd probably want that, but right. Black bear, dude, I've, I know guys that have shot him with, uh, 17 hmr and killed them okay because i'm going out yeah (laughs) (laughs) my lightweight backcountry rifles is uh 6.5 creed more so i mean anything that's enough gun yeah it's just about shot placement like don't take anything too far i mean it's a good round but it's like you know i always try to tell people like try to shoot things 400 and in you know yeah i'm honestly at this point in my career i'm not shooting past 400 anyway and i'm shooting a good copper mono bullet that seems to to do pretty well and the stuff i've used it on this year so um so i think that'd be all right you think so yeah for sure (laughs) um so this is something i was seeing the other day like um yeah field dressing a bear i mean is there anything different or weird is it just pretty much you quartered up just like any other animal pretty much i mean yeah skinning them's like especially if you're doing it for a rug it takes a while you know just like and you want to there's a lot of guides on the internet that'll kind of show you how to do it um and then just take it like i said they're very thin skinned animals so like you want to take your time because like bears are one thing it's like when you're skinning it out like you're gonna have a tendency to punch through the hide you know with yeah. your knife um it's kind of weird though kind of unnerving you get them skinned out and they look like a person <laughs> like they have the same like muscle layout and like yeah. the same that we do and it's like kind of i remember the first one i did i was like that's weird yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know like you get it skinned out and you're like huh Huh. <laughs> what like when you get down to the like the claw area do you just kind of like pull it off and the claws stay on the animal or do they come Most off with the time, hide i just cut like the wrist okay and, like, the whole hand stays in there um if you were packing it out super far you might want to like d hand you know skin out the whole hand yeah um, but it like most of the time on a black hair that hide's not going to be much more than like i mean if you shoot a big one like 70 pounds maybe all right. Um, and then you're just going to come all the way up and then just cut as close to the head as you can. Just cut the, cut the head yeah, straight off. You should be able to like, I mean, it depends on how you're doing it, but you most of the time, especially if you're rugging it, you can skin it all. Like you can cut it to right here mm-hmm. and then you want to like, you'll kind of like tube it out, I guess, you know, over the head, but you should be able to get right behind the head, like in between the head and the spinal column. And then just like, feel like you do a deer, like cut around it and then like spin it. Yeah. Off. Well, I'm going with some guys that are pretty experienced this year. I actually linked up with some guys, so um, I won't be completely on my own trying to figure all the stuff on the fly. So that'll be good. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but uh, I mean, as far as like meat goes, too. I mean, I know you know some guys are like, "Ah, oh, bears, all right." Some guys I've talked to love it and just it's like their favorite. Um, what about you? You like to eat the meat or? I think it's pretty good uh yeah. depends on the bear most of the boars that you kill i think are gonna have like pretty good looking meat like most of the boars that i've killed have all had like great looking meat and yeah. it tastes great um i always get it processed into like uh what i do I do like bratwurst style like german bratwurst and then um call it thuringer it's like a summer sausage okay. you know i'm not eating bear steaks i have had i did make a uh, bear heart jerky one time hmm. that was outstanding because like bear fat is like sweet it's not like you know that like of like the deer or elk (laughs) you know when you eat like deer fat it's kind of like yeah halloween you Mm -hmm. know taste um but you definitely want to make sure you cook it yeah i heard the trichinosis can be an issue for sure so it's like you don't want to be like raw dog in that thing and like (laughs) (laughs) you know cooking a meat and wear steak or something like that yeah and i've heard that it can like um bear bear fat can go rancid even in the freezer correct i don't know i'm sure it can yeah i've heard i've heard that do you have any like favorite recipes for cooking i mean you said that jerky one but any other uh recipe or you just mainly get it like sausage and that kind of stuff yeah the the german sausages that we get made here locally are like really good i like yeah. them a lot nice and then, you know and they're already like pre-cooked so you can like snack on them but I like them a lot. Yeah. 
so most of your most of your bear trips do you are you going in like kind of backcountry style like for a couple days or are you doing day hunts or what i'm mostly day hunt um okay. you definitely can backpack hunt but my biggest issue with like backpack hunting is like it can either be great or you're kind of married to a spot sometimes that doesn't necessarily like mm -hmm. that great. and it, most of the time too here it's like unless you're hunting in june it's like most of this country isn't that like burned off yet so you're you know you're not you, you don't have to go 15 miles back in there it's like a lot of the time you're bear hunting especially like early in april i'm like maxed out at like five miles you know okay. it's like i'm not going that far and it's like for me it's like dude I think some of my biggest rips all season are spring bear hunting. I mean, I've definitely had like 20 mile days, um, yeah. but it's like, dude, it's so nice out. And it's like, the days are so long. I don't know. At least I just don't feel the need to like backpack on them. Yeah. So you're kind of just getting out there early, maybe hitting a trail and then getting a vantage point and just spend your day glassing kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't bother with the morning. I like, I'll oh, sleep. Really? Okay. no, I don't morning hunt at all. Um, that said, I've my, one of my personal best bears a shot, like, fairly early in the morning but that's the yeah. exception <laughs> most bears you see you're gonna see like after 11 a.m um okay early in the season you're gonna see them like during the heat of the day like the solar noon so you're gonna see them between like 10 and like four or five o'clock four okay. o'clock um mid-season it's like that's definitely gonna be like a one you're, you're gonna see them anytime afternoon between noon okay. and dark so they are pretty um, active middle of the day yeah for sure middle of the day is your best best time okay um later in the season like in that june hunt like it's definitely like an evening game you can in june it's almost worth hunting in the morning because it's like they're definitely out in the cool of the day uh yeah. but it's such like an you know five o'clock on because it's light in june it's light till after 10 yeah you know? nice man so you can kind of sleep in a little bit <laughs> yeah it's not like i mean if, if you did decide to like backpack hunt obviously you'd want to take advantage of that morning you know dawn glass mm -hmm. um but if you're like day hunting, like I wouldn't worry about waking up early, you know, I mean, most of mine have all been, you know, nice. Like, yeah, that five o'clock hour is like the witching hour. Okay. That's good. I didn't even think about that. So I'm glad you brought that up. Um, what about, uh, this last year, man? Did you have any, uh, any good, uh, any good kills this last year you want to tell us about? Uh, I mean, I had a pretty decent season. I spent, um, I did a spring bear hunt in Alaska up on Prince of Wales. It was pretty fun. Uh, I did was that black bear or brown bear, black bear. Um, that was a pretty good time. Uh, I did, I guided obviously a lot up there and then I did a moose hunt when I was up there and that was pretty sweet. I killed, uh, the yeah, Alaskan moose almost 20 years to the day that I killed my Shiras. Um, Oh, nice. That was pretty cool. You know, uh, yeah. be able to like, have a moose in the scope again yeah. <laughs> you know like it's not like a super it's kind of a rare thing to hunt um but up there it's like otc so it's like you know right. you can't beat that um was it a lot bigger yeah. than your was it bigger than your lower 48 moose oh substantially for sure <laughs> well i didn't kill like a big one i killed like a medium sized uh -huh. bull I feel like a great bull but you know like nothing wasn't anything compared to our western alaska moose <laughs> right don't they have to be like 50 inch minimum or something for non-residents or is that um, it depends on the area so like some area it's like a 50 inch minimum or three brow tine yeah. uh, the area we were in was yeah three brow tine or 50 and i think it was 48 inches wide and had a three brow tine okay on, so. cool cool man well yeah so what do you got uh what do you got planned for this next season uh, i know we, you're still waiting on the alaska results but uh what other kind of ventures you got going well, I didn't draw anything in Alaska. I just checked it like Oh, you minutes. checked? <laughs> For sure. Um, oh, man. Oh, I got to check mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm guiding guiding some bear hunts here in Montana. Um, I'm going up and guiding a bear hunt, uh, a brown bear hunt in Alaska on, in Katmai um, uh -huh. in May. And then be guiding in Alaska, trying to do some hunting while I'm up there. And then kind of just seeing what I draw in Montana. I'm supposed to go to Kyrgyzstan in November. Yeah, oh, nice. That should be pretty fun. What are you um, hunting over there? Uh, Ibex. Nice, dude. Is that yeah. just for like, that's just for fun. You're not guiding, right? Uh, I was supposed to take a client. He obviously like we were supposed to go in 2020 and COVID happened and that didn't yeah. work. And then um, last year, my passport expired. I didn't realize it. I was in Alaska and uh. 
the outfitter's like hitting me up and he's like hey man i'm like uh my passport's <laughs> expired dude <laughs> oh that sucks so i wasn't able to go but this year should uh should be able to go cool man um so i mean but it sounds like most of the stuff you do is is guided you i mean do you have any like personal kind of things you're looking forward to doing um i guess you're still waiting know, on montana yeah i just kind of seeing what i draw in montana and then kind of just i'm gonna like my main focus is gonna be the ibex this year um yeah. and then just trying to fill in the rest of the dates with personal hunts you know um yeah seeing if i can do anything else but cool we'll man see. Well, cool, man. Well, dude, I appreciate you letting me pick your brain here on, on the bear stuff. Um, is there anything else I didn't really hit on that you'd wanted to mention for a newbie? Uh, just glass as much as you can. Yeah. You know, you're going to spend, you spend more time on your glass. I mean, you're going to have to spend time hiking too, but like yeah. most of your day should be spent on the glass and like, don't be afraid to walk out of there like in the dark. Yeah. You know? Like for sure. You're not going to happen to walk in in the dark, but you're probably going to spend most of the days like walking out you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> well um where can people reach you if they want to like talk about um you know booking a hunt or because like you said you're doing stuff in alaska a lot of guys want to do that um you know the spring bear stuff so um if somebody maybe wants to get into it but isn't ready to kind of go off on their own they want to hit you up what's the best place to find you uh my instagram account uh durango.boone um that's definitely the best place to reach out to me and I'm pretty responsive on there. So if you reach out, like I'll get back to you pretty quick. Cool, man. Well, dude, I appreciate your time again and, um, looking forward to get out in there, getting out there. And, uh, if I get anything down, I'll definitely shoot you a picture and say, thanks for, uh, oh, thanks yeah, for man, your help. For sure. <laughs> for sure. All right, yeah, brother. All right. Thanks again, man. All right, dude. Talk to you later.